Welcome guys to Quantum Conscious Conversations. Today we're going to be talking about the power of meditation. We're going to give you some tips about how to hack your brain, how to, in a way, stop the mind from taking you to places you perhaps don't necessarily want to go to. And today I have the honor to have my Belay's brother, let's call it that way. His name is Trev. You can find him on Instagram. I'll put his information right about here. And thank you so much, Trev, for being here. He is a bliss coach, meditation teacher. I'm feeling blissed out as always uh, from the morning routine. You know what it is. Yeah. Those pathways wired. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, brother? I'm feeling great, honestly. I think, you know, today has been a really flowy day and I'm just showing up, you know, for my, 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 my own manifestations. Um, I'm curious, what got you into meditation? Um, can you tell us, and can you tell everyone that is watching, what's your perspective on meditation? Um, what really got you into it and how it changed your entire life? It's oh, a good question. Um, I basically just started observing my mind and realizing that I'm not the mind because I feel like that's just where it started. Um, you know, real meditation, meditation itself, the word means to become familiar with um, who we really are. And I felt like I didn't even exist before. <laughs> like, I didn't, my, it, the thing was, is that my awareness is, was so, and most of our awarenesses is, are so entrapped in our thought trains and thinking that we are our thoughts. And um, we just kind of go about our lives on this hamster wheel kind of. Um, I love mode, yes. Yes. And, and our mind is really just, really just formed by all of our past experiences. And, yes. um, you know, it's, it's about disidentifying from the mind and that's what waking up is. And so I kind of got into that through hip hop. Um, it was very, and a lot of my friends and, you know, family that I know hip hop helped them um, wake up and remember, because it's almost like just, just that self inquiry and that like, you know, self expression allows you to kind of get a look at yourself. And uh, my notepad was like a mirror for me. And so that kind of led me to reflecting on who I really am um, through that. And then I just, you know, I started to get really into like exploring astral realms and like, I wanted to like meet aliens. I started hearing about psychedelics mm -hmm. and I probably saw a few art pieces like the ones behind you and was like, what? I want to see that. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was almost like this childlike yeah as well that brought me into meditation like this wonder um of of just like oh i want to like find out what what's out there that's really big i still am a big um fan listener of uh terence mckenna he's always just like awakened my childlike spirit like talking about these uh dmt elves and all these beings in other dimensions um that are accessible through meditation and you know through many different means um but meditation like this um the like curious about the universe and life in general or so like, yeah tell us like around what age you know you kind of had like this like rebirth so it was probably like 15 when i started getting into hip-hop and psychedelics and stuff but i feel like kids naturally are awakened to a certain degree um, so I felt like, you know, I was pretty connected back then. I, I saw right through, you know, uh, the religion that was surrounding me at the time was, was Mormonism because I, I live in Utah. Okay. And so, you know, I, I looked within with that and it just didn't resonate with me. Um, and it felt like it was just like kind of being pressured on me because everyone around me was that way. Um, so from an early age, I was almost forced to look within um for my own answers which was such a blessing and i'm very yeah. grateful that and it, i feel like it's all like really connected you know like sometimes like our environment really helps us to like 
uh, go for that remembrance, you know, and like try to like find our own path, you know. And and everything that's happening is just happening for our spiritual evolution. Like literally, this world is one big cocoon that's helping us grow into a butterfly. Yeah, and it's dark. You know, it seems like the end of the world, but it's just the beginning. <laughs> Can you lead us in and share some um some stories of like one of your first meditations and how like what did you feel? Because I know for everyone it's so different, you know. And uh, yeah. there's so many types of meditations, you know, there's movement meditation, stillness, you know, the list goes on. But uh for you, like what did you feel? What exactly what practice did you do? Tell us a little bit more about. So it's almost like, you know, I had meditated before, but I wasn't really meditating. Like it's, it's almost like um, meditation, people kind of see it as an act, like something to do. But I mean, like the real definition, like, you know, meditation is just, you know, meditation itself is, you know, just the awareness. Meditation itself is awareness of who we are. Conscious observation. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, my first like pretty profound experience was it was a heart meditation mm. and um it was by my brother Aaron Dowdy on YouTube um definitely recommend checking him out um how old were you I was I was like probably like 17 I <laughs> wow, love that yeah it wasn't too long ago I'm 22 now so like five years ago um but basically what happened was um it was so profound for me because I'd never, I was so disconnected from our hearts. Like a lot of us are nowadays. And, um, and basically I got to the point where I was like really interested in like sparking this heart chakra energy. And, um, there was this one part of the meditation where he would count from one to 10 and every number he'd count, he's like, he's like, okay, double that energy. And like, he's turning up this dial of, of your heart chakra and like I get to 10 and like I feel this vibration in my heart and like I had I had never felt any like energy before really wow. um and so this was like really interesting to me because I was it was a whole new world yeah and so I would like rewind that part <laughs> over and over to like wow. spread this and I got to the point where my whole body is like this was definitely my most pro like my first profound experience with meditation was flooding my whole body with heart chakra energy mm -hmm. and um i haven't done that in a while it it takes a lot of effort and like re you have to reach so deep to be like no like there is more love because really there's an infinite amount of love for all of us to feel in every moment that we can pull from and so i was just kind of connecting with that and it was weird let me i'll just explain this as well what happened was like it literally like my whole body it felt like it was there was a weight on it because of how much dense like it's almost like the vibration was so strong and then my thumbs I don't know if you've ever known seen this but my thumbs involuntarily like went inwards like this and um like when my eyes were closed I, I couldn't tell that they were like that but when I opened my eyes and I got out of the meditation I was like what the heck like what's going on and then like I fry my thumb out and I was like why is this and like I'd get up and I was like walking like this. I was like, whoa. And I think it's because I got out of the meditation too quickly. Yes. I didn't like like reintegrate that that energy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was super interesting. And that's that's kind of what my one of my first profound meditation experiences. Yeah, it sounds like what you're describing is like that first of uh, conscious connection when you're connecting to that quantum world and also your own life body, you know, and just like really feeling. Mm -hmm energy you know i feel like for a lot of people their first ever meditation is like you always remember it you know because it's like that doorway that really quantum jumped you into a whole new world you know and it's just like it's just like one simple meditation right yeah yeah what was what was your first meditation um what what was wow. your awakening yeah. what kind of um, my first meditation, well, I was in a way like learning how to become more aware, you know, 
And I started with yoga, honestly, you know, started doing yoga and um, how I really got into it. Um, during that time, I was dancing a lot and I needed a way to be able to uh, stretch. And I didn't necessarily, I really didn't like the traditional ways to stretch, stretch for dancers. So, you know, one thing led to another and I ended up on YouTube, Googling, you know, yoga, whatever, and I tried it. And it wasn't that easy, you know, at all. Because I feel like in the, the first stage, I was like trying to do all the poses really, really perfect, you know, with my mind of a dancer, like, you know, getting all the poses correctly, perfect. But little by little, I started to have this observation, observation, this sense of just awareness. And then I started to integrate the conscious breathing, you know, and I started to breathe in, you know, and then like breathing on, on areas of my body, you know, and then that, that's when I really realized how I was able to let go of a lot of stress that was in my body through breathing and becoming just more aware. But honestly, I was, I felt like I was just being led in a way, you know, on my own and later on that led me into just trying, uh, stillness meditation you know and I did try that but then there was this one meditation uh by Teal Swan she's actually from Utah and I did her spirit guides meet your spirit guides uh, guided meditation and I think it was like 23 minutes you know and I was you know I was like okay I'm just gonna lay down just breathe just do it that changed my life, you know, because that, during that moment, I really had that, that same moment that you had when you were connected to your heart, you know, I felt like I was really like, I'm, I don't want to say finally, but I really, really connected to the quantum field and, you know, like something out of this world, you know? And mm -hmm. I remember when I got out of the meditation, I was just like, whoa, I was like, let me do it again. <laughs> so I did yeah. that meditation every day, you know, because I wanted to feel that. I was like, and every time I would go on it, it would get, you know, it was even better and better. But then, Trev, what I realized is that after doing that meditation for, let's say, two weeks, I realized I was feeling different. I was feeling different about my life. You know, I was able to cope with things better. And during that time, I really didn't know it was actually, you know, me connected to my higher self. And at the same time, my brain, you know, releasing dopamine and like making me feel great. But um, after that, you know, I just started jumping into other meditations. You know, I wanted to experience this meditation about feeling good, this med guided meditation about um, stress relief, you know. and then that introduced me to the world of YouTube guided meditations that is beyond, you know, all these creators, you know, like Trev and I, we have the, this beautiful art form to be able to craft guided meditations, you know, and so like for me, I appreciate all the creators that, you know, that get to create all these guided meditations because they're so profound, you know, they do them with like love, you know, and like, all of that. So for me, that's how it started. Yeah, that's so beautiful, bro. And yeah, I agree, man. All they all have their own medicine, and it's it's beautiful to hear about like your first experience. And like it's crazy because I started doing the meditations like every day, just like you did. Because I I feel like when you get that first meditation in that like really hits. Oh, yeah That that's like a huge seed that's planted. Like whatever meditation you do, like that you remember the most, that like really was first. Yeah. I think. Uh, you know, that's like kind of hinting at what your medicine is a little bit, you know? Oh, yeah. I feel like it's, it's like a, a, a key that really just, you know, like more of a catalyst, you know, to the multidimensional self, you know, and all of that. And mm. I just want to tell everyone, whoever that is watching us, that if you're now just getting into meditation, you know, just try different ways, you know? Like even for me, like for me in the beginning was yoga. 
And there was just this one specific pose, Asana, that would just put me in the right place, you know? So I would do it a lot. You know, the mind wanted to be like, okay, do that one, you know? And the, the whole thing about all this, you know, it's like getting to know yourself and like practicing and having fun too, you know? Mm. Do you have any tips for uh, new star seeds for light workers or just people know that, you know, are just waking up that um, any tips about meditation that you want to share? Yeah. Um, the first one is, um, you know, I'll, I'll share this quote real quick um, by Eckhart Tolle, uh, one of my favorite spiritual teachers. This is a little bit of a paraphrase. Can't remember it exactly, but basically he said, if I were to give you one piece of advice for all of your, you know, spiritual journey about spiritual awakening, like about that, um, it would be to disidentify from the mind or the ego. And I think, you know, that's super important to just realize that you're not the thoughts because at a core level, if you believe that you are the thoughts and you haven't transcended that, you know, that Western material, wow. mind, I think, therefore I am, you're not going to be able to get past those, you know, thoughts because you have a belief, a very strong belief about who you are that's blocking you. Um, and so that self-identity is super important. And then another thing. So, yeah, I would just encourage, you know, looking into if you have a hard time subscribing to the belief that we are awareness, um, you know, looking into Eastern philosophy, looking into Buddhism, kind of checking out, you know, having an open mind to the concepts. Um, one, of, one of my teachers in my life has told me, you know, like <clears throat> almost like seeking enlightenment or, um, you know, whatever we're trying to accomplish through meditation, it, it's literally like trying to find your glasses when they're already on your face. Right. And, and because, you know, meditation, it's not a means to an end. It's just the meditation itself is, is the end and the journey is the destination. And so, you know, I'd remind people of that. And then one last thing, um, the number one thing people come to me with, and I'm sure you as well, like this is one of them, is... I just <laughs> classic. Like, I just can't seem to have, I just can't seem to quiet my mind. Like I can't stop my thoughts. And the advice I give is to just not try to stop the thoughts because if, if you are trying to stop the thoughts, then it's the mind trying to stop yeah. the mind. It just doesn't. If anything you're resisting will persist. I really, I really love what you said earlier about like, you know, thoughts in like, if, if people have a personal belief, you know, like, or they don't necessarily understand that they're not their thoughts, you know, that's a personal belief, you know? Yeah. And personal beliefs are nothing but recurring thoughts that we think about them often that they actually become this belief that we have, you know? So it's like, and all of that can be reprogrammed, you know? And like, I love that you mentioned that because we're indeed not our thoughts, you know, like the mind was designed in divine code, the mind and the ego, you know, and oftentimes I feel like people, um, once they, they become uh, conscious, they start having this fight with the mind and the ego, you know, hate my ego, you know, my mind, I can't control it. And I feel like um, something healthy would be learning how to navigate with those aspects of yourself and understanding that you are not just your mind and your ego, you know, you're this awareness, you know, and like, yeah, like that's, th those are really great, great um, tips. Thank you for sharing that for sure. Yeah. And thank you for sharing as well. Did you have any more tips that you would say, like, you know, any? Let me, block? you know, when it comes to meditation, um, for me, what I recommend to people is to, for me, discipline is everything, you know? But at, at the same time, I know when like, I can't be, I can't necessarily practice my discipline. I know when to also have compassion to myself. You know, 
and, and give that unconditional love and not be so hard on myself, you know? But I do, you know, like after um, guiding people and, and coaching them into meditation for the last seven years, I came to realize that, you know, like having that concentration of the mind is, can be transcendental, you know, like really, really like building this practice of discipline, you know, and like every day, like as a new opportunity to try and practice it, you know what I mean? And I feel like every day that that new practice allows you not just to feel better, but to also get to know yourself. You know, I get a lot of messages, Trev, that they're like, can you tell me my life purpose? I, I don't know. You know, like, I feel like that life purpose, like, we find it. You know, and sometimes going from within and, and perhaps building this uh, routine or perhaps a discipline of meditation, we're able really to download those messages from the higher self, you know, that highest best version of ourselves and one of the last tips that I do want to share is that perhaps in the beginning meditation is going to feel it's going to make people feel great you know and I feel like it, it's always going to make people feel great you know but it's not just about that it's also a discovery it's that pathway you know to that quantum field is that that road that takes you to become aware and have that conscious connection to your higher self and they are right there. That's the true guidance, you know, cause it's all, you're, it's all happening from within yourself, you know? So once we yeah. really have a discipline of a practice, we have more opportunity to be able to have those experiences, mm -hmm. you know? And the, you know, last thing, if you're just now, anyone's getting now into meditation, try it, you know, but try to really integrate it to your daily life. If it's making you feel great, you know, keep going, you know, because every day is a new present moment, you know, we're just like, it's, it's like we're realigning that mind and becoming just aware, you know. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's so beautiful, brother. And I... I just love that discipline into it. It's it's pretty easy to just fall asleep um, for multiple lifetimes on the wheel of samsara, as they say. <laughs> um, and, you know, you could just, you know, pick up a meditation practice today and it'd be super profound for you um, and just change your whole, but then you go back into your, you know, your habits and your, your regular life. And it's like, it never happened because you didn't integrate it like you were saying. Yeah. And so, yeah. I Mm -hmm. and practice the 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 discipline and the practice then acts as a vehicle to actually you know build that spiritual momentum for lack of a better term um, yeah, yeah. um for your it, it's like it's almost like a there's this one quote that that's like if you if you have a strong enough inner fire to transform your being um you know, and you fuel that fire with your will or, or whatever, then it'll, it'll eventually consume your whole being. Um, but you need to stoke that flame or else it'll go out. And I feel like that's what causes so many people to be asleep is that they don't have that consistency. Um, it, there's another quote that says, seek enlightenment as if your hair is on fire or don't seek it at all. <laughs> yeah. It, I feel like there's definitely that thin line when it comes like, I feel like everything if, if people really get to a place of like having that, that discipline or like routine, you know, and not all meditations have to be like people like just sitting down and doing guided meditations, you know, uh, like you said earlier, you know, that meditative state is really just vibrating for yourself from awareness, you know, knowing you're in that seat of awareness, consciously ob observing what's happening in your life not from reactivity but like really just in that seat of awareness you know and i really love that you just mentioned um 
implementing that into your day-to-day -day life. And that takes us to the next chapter of this episode. You know, how can we implement all of this to the day-to-day? -day? You know, not just like when we are in that deep state of meditation and we're, at, you know, feeling great. How can we implement that day-to-day, -day, you know? Yeah. You want to add to that in your experience? Yeah. So, like, first off, just want to say, like, at a core level, life is a meditation. And, you know, the, the purpose of, you know, going back to this every day and having this practice and having this discipline, um, which is really just self-love, right? Discipline really is just we're yeah. giving our what we really want. Like, we don't yeah. we don't want like go towards that bag of chips in that movie. That's not what we really want. So discipline is having enough love for ourselves in the moment, having enough consciousness in the moment to be able to do yes. that, to be like, what do I really want? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I feel like this daily meditation is what's happening. Is it's a reprogramming um, and it's, you know, it's a shedding of layers because we have had so much information up here, like throughout our lives that, you know, decompressing it releasing like i want to just say you know the best meditation is being a kid and just going and having fun because you think about it, kids are meditating all the time and they're already in that natural state um but you know as adults living in the society we've got programmed our neural pathways have you know been wired in a certain way and it, it we can't it's almost like we can't get out of this neural network. So Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot, uh, a lot. Um, basically, you know, you have thoughts that lead to feelings, which lead to actions, which lead to thoughts, right? And it's in this, this cycle. And so, you know, people are living in their past, as, as Joe Dispenza says, because they're having the same thoughts, same feelings, same behavior, you know, based on past experiences based on beliefs that they have Absolutely, yes and we're always going to act like in accordance to who we see ourselves as mm -hmm. and so how to really rewire this is uh, and so like just imagine this jungle and you know we have the pathways cut out right and we're so used to taking those pathways it's easy we know we know what's going to happen when we take these pathways like when you're standing on the on that you know, those crossroads between that bag of chips and that movie and passing out on the couch and, you know, doing some breath work. It, these are just, you know, too, you're not really used to that pathway. You're not used to that, that, gu that guided meditation on YouTube. But once you've yeah. done that, the first time you go through that pathway is going to be the hardest. You're going to be met with the most resistance. But once you go through there once, then you're going to be able to keep going through there again. And that's going to lead you somewhere you've never been. So yeah. people are always about oh I feel so stuck in my life like I you know I'm so depressed it, and and really depression is is a uh, is an end like a stuck energy and, and it's it's that energy needing to be moved whether it's physically emotionally yes yeah and and so you know it's really just breaking out of this mental conditioning uh breaking out of this you know neural network breaking out of this jungle or you can even call it the matrix, our own personal self-imposed cage um, that is our unconscious mind. And so, you know, just bringing it back to meditation, that's how we rewire all of it is just to become aware of it. Because if you're at those crossroads between that bag of chips and that breath work, and you have that, you've cultivated enough awareness to be like, oh, wait, that's not what I want to do. Like, okay. So it's really just becoming sane <laughs> again. And um you know, I, I love that you mentioned that because how I see it, how I see what you're describing is actually the mind not knowing what's there. So it goes into fear, you know, and oftentimes that our mind wants to keep us in this box. You know, like, oh, no, no, don't go there because I don't know what's there. You know, stay in here because, you know, here is more comfortable. Don't walk down that road because you don't know what's on the other side. So one of my tips to people is like, label what's going on. You know, you can label, you can label the whole thing such as, okay, my mind perhaps is having trouble right now, you know, understanding 
And that's okay because we do have that survival uh, reptilian brain, you know? In one of the, one of the um, metaphors I always give to people is that when we feel like that, let's say there is two bedrooms, right? And we're in one bedroom and then there's a door, right? And, you know, we, we have been in this bedroom the entire time, you know? But there, there's part of us, you know, that we want to experience something new, something better. You know, and sometimes, sometimes, oftentimes, when that little tiny quantum jump that we got to do is literally just the mind not knowing what's in the other room. And it literally just takes opening the door, you know? And then the mind also starts to create all these, all these stories, you know? Well, what if I, what if I'm not good enough? What if that's not going to work out, you know? Or I'll just sit here with all the experiences that I already know how to control, how to cope and how to deal. So it really takes about in knowing that opening the door to that other room, you know, and just like, just doing it, you know, and knowing that even if that room is like, you don't know what's in there, or let's say it's like pitch black, you are that light. And as soon as you walk in, you are that light and it shines into the entire room, you know? So it's like, it, that's that rewiring, that is that reprogramming, you know, mm. of, of, of the self, really. Yeah. And I want to just add that just, just one choice, just one, just opening up that one door can lead to infinite different possibilities. And that's what we did with that one meditation. Mm -hmm. It was was there. You know, Trav, that's, I feel like that's a beautiful thing because once we're able to better ourselves through self-love, which is really discipline, you know, being so conscious and and knowing that you can create your reality, you know, you can, perhaps you're this plane, this airplane, and it's going on pilot mode your entire life, but you can't actually get up pilot mode and start flying your airplane to places that you want to go. You start creating your reality, you know? Yeah. And... It's just so, it's, I wanted to add this too. Every, in there are infinite upward and downward spirals that we can take in every moment. And so, you know, just to bring it back to that metaphor that, you know, that neural pathway, the bag of chips and the movie and passing out. Yeah. I mean, for me, sometimes it, it, it starts with like, I'm hit, I take one hit of ganja and then like, like, I'm not against cannabis or anything. Um, it's actually, I have a very strong, amazing relationship with cannabis. Um, but, you know, sometimes it'll set me down a different pathway, oh, yeah. start indulging, and then one thing leads to another. And you can just see, you know, my awareness can see where it's leading. And, um, you know, you don't have to necessarily be like, oh, I'm going to like have a whole new morning and night routine. I'm going to like commit to it and like, you know, try to do it all at once. Because, you know, what tends to happen with that is that people get attached to that. And, and if it doesn't work out, they lose faith in themselves. Oh, yes, absolutely. And so, and so all steps, you know, baby steps. Yes, baby steps. What you're describing is what I, what I call, like, um, when people are just waking up, they, they open that one door. And they're like, whoa, that feels amazing. And then they want to do all these big, big quantum leaps. And sometimes you just got to go to step number two, you know, you don't necessarily want to do perhaps if your mind, you know, during that time, you don't have much discipline, perhaps what you want to do is one, that baby step to number two, you know, and oftentimes, you know, people want to do all this big quantum leaps, you know, and that, and I feel like that's also a reflection of the mind, you know, or the ego, like, oh, I can just jump from one to four, you know? I feel like later on, it gets easier and you're able really to have those big quantum leaps. You know, you're really able to just like go from one, four, you know, eight, 12, whatever, you know? So it really is about taking those baby steps. 
And yeah, pay so. Yeah, because it really is all part of the journey. It really is. Mm. Yeah, and, and just just to like kind of finish that off, um, it's like, you know, you don't you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to explore all these quantum realms at once. Um, but once you, you know, you have enough awareness, self-love and discipline um, to just make that one choice. You're, you, you know, you're looking between these two neural pathways. Like, OK, I know where this one leads to the bag of chips yeah. and the downward spiral, but I don't know where this one leads. But, you know, you don't you can just you know what I like to do is I just be like, you know what, I'm just going to do this breath work real quick. Like just, just do this breath work and then I can do anything I want after. I'm just going to do this one thing and then I can have my bag of chips. I can smoke, I can smoke, I can watch the movie, anything, but I'm going to just do this breath work first. And then once I do that breath work, I do not even want that bag of chips in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a viral. I love that. Yes. Cause then you, then you also become aware and then you realize that sometimes the mind and the ego just wants and wants more more and more and more and sometimes it's just like you know that breath work really brings you into that center stage you know where you might be feeling your temporary self or your body's feeling all these uh, emotions or feelings but i i know that there is this part of us which is the awareness that can hold all of these tiny little emotions and feelings of the physical self without being able to become that because the, the awareness is so spacious it's so so huge you know Trev it's almost like this big stage you know and sometimes our mind is the one on the stage animating moving oh I want this I want to do this or whatever but when you become aware your awareness is literally understanding that you are the stage you know and you're just watching your temporary self on that stage moving you know that is conscious awareness yeah metacognition and i love that you you brought that up because it's like that's that that reminds me of the plato's cave analogy and you know how you know just takes that one that one doorway open to lead to a whole world that you never knew before um really you know the modern version of that is we're all in a movie theater and yes watching the movie and we don't know that we are the audience kind of like how you were saying we 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 think that the images on the screen are real we yeah. think that the hand is real because because i can feel it but really you know everything is energy and the vibrational scale goes on infinitely and so it's really just my senses are tuned to the degree where i can feel this and so that makes it real but ultimately i feel like we are not, we are not the images on the screen. And, and just consider this for a second. What if we are not even the observer? Um, we're not the observed or the observer um, because those are still in duality. So going beyond both of those, maybe we are the source of light. Like maybe God is the project, God or great spirit is the projector, is that source of light. Um, that the whole world is made manifest and like the deeper and deeper. And that's that silver cord of light, you know, that we did the meditation with. Um, and, um, you know, that all pervading light that just illuminates the illusion, lights up the whole cave, you know, yeah. all the all the crazy quantum realms here now um, illuminated through our conscious awareness. Yeah. I, you know, I feel like there's always going to be this higher perspective and higher truth about everything but then we're here in this reality <laughs> you know and, here we are and that's what like you know like this episode is it really is about you know like day to day you know what can we do like if perhaps practicing some mantras or um flow state We'll put you in that alignment, you know, perhaps mm -hmm. that's what we got to do. You know, that's what we got to do. And really it's about being that little kid, like you said, you know, it really is about being that kid and, and playing again, but also knowing when to unlearn, you know, unlearn and reprogram itself, you know, mm -hmm. because 
Um, sometimes, you know, like I understand that, you know, gratitude is so important, but when it comes to the time when we really just gotta really sit with our perhaps fear, you know, or fear that is presented, or when we are seeing these patterns or, or, or old beliefs, you know, they keep manifesting over and over. I always advise people to like, you know, like suppressing that doesn't work, you know, and really it's about also like learning how to transmute that energy and knowing that we're so powerful, you know, and you know what, Trev, even healing yourself, we're healing ourselves, not because we're broken, but because we're remembering our divine self, you know, can you just give us some last thoughts on some of the practices that you would all love to, you know, just share with the people that are watching us. So, um, you know, it all kind of ties in together. And um, I think that health and wellness is super important for our happiness because, mm. you know, and our consciousness because these these different foods are have different vibrational levels yeah. and we're not going to be able to you know be able to fully rise up the vibrational scale if you know we're eating things that are lower on the scale because we are what yeah, we eat that would actually hold you into the yeah. world of form yes yeah so i just want to make that clear like you know eating good is a, is a practice eating eating um fruits and vegetables and organic um food and clean living structured water is super important for all of it um but you know really i just i feel called to take it back to the basics with this because i could go off about all these you know practices from different cultures and like yeah everything. um but honestly if if you can go outside in the morning and get you can you can get here this is what i'll talk about real quick so I have this thing called the seven pillars of the morning routine. Okay. And they're, in my opinion, like the most important because because we evolved in a certain way um, as humans to, to where, you know, we need sunlight. We need, we need our feet on the ground. We're used to sleeping on the ground. Um, we're used to, you know, the water hasn't always been this, bad <laughs> and so it's like just coming back into alignment with that natural flow of things because nature knows best nature knows the remedy for all nature and so yes yes so in the morning if you can get sunlight ground yes. water um and let me like also say with that um like speaking to your water because our you know water is super absorbent and uh carries information and yeah. so you got Check out the experiments by doc uh, experiments by Dr. Emoto where he yeah. tests the water. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really important as one of those pillars to structure your water and to have intentional water drinking. So there's a uh, sunlight, grounding, water, breath, um, preferably with some breath work or just some deep breathing. You know, consciously breathing through the stomach. We've became really chronic. Nice. Um, and then there is a, uh, you know, movement. Mm. so you know there's a bunch of different ways you can you know get your juices flowing i like to do the five tibetan rites those have been most powerful for me just activates both hemispheres of my brain gets all my blood flowing um and really just like coordinates my body gets me ready um so i like to do those you can do yoga or qigong or just go on a walk um one of, if, if you're wanting to make a huge change in your life but you don't want to commit to all these crazy practices um maybe just First thing in the morning, instead of getting on your phone, going outside and taking a walk through the grass um, in the sunlight and just focusing on your breath, right? So it's like a walking meditation. You get like five, five of those things, I, four or five of those things I mentioned in, and you know, you can bring your water with you. Um, and if you can give yourself some time at the start of the day, because that's most important. So those, those first five minutes, I think this is an important point. Um, those first five minutes of your day, our brains are more in a theta state and actually in the lab as well. Absolutely. And so this is, yeah. And this is like the prime time to rewire your brain. And so 
you know, if you're wanting to fit in a bunch of high vibe practices, I would do it, try to do it in the morning and, you know, stay off your phone as long as possible. Stay out of the reactive mind as long as possible. Oh, yes. you can get on your phone first thing in the morning and just like you see a comment on Facebook that, you know, sets, puts you in a fight or flight. And that one thing lays the neurological network for the rest of your day. Um, it sets the blueprint, you know, it sets the tone. Like when you yeah. wake up, up your toe, you're probably going to have a struggle day, but you can always switch those because of those uh, spirals we talked about. Um, and gratitude journaling, um, simple as that. Um, also, um, at night, I like to acknowledge uh, one of my practices. I like to acknowledge all the things that I did get done, all the things that I was proud of myself for that day. Um, because I noticed this pattern to where like I was killing it, right? Like I'm doing my morning routine, getting all this stuff done, recording this video. And then at the end of the day, I would still feel kind of unfulfilled. Um, and so I found that writing, you know, what I'm proud of myself for and just journaling in general can be a beautiful way to expand consciousness because you, you're, you can get your, you know, you can take a look at yourself, you know, from a different view and like have an outlet for that. So those are just a few of the main things that I definitely want to recommend. I love that you mentioned journaling because it really is about like, it, it validates your reality, you know, like you have actually seen it, the paper. You're like, oh, I actually got to do this. You know, mm -hmm. even for myself, like I just got into journaling, like I think two, two or three months ago, my uh, best friend, um, Aria, shout out to her, she um she inspired me to just get into journaling and then you know i just started making lists and then i would just go uh and then i would i would actually forget about the, the list you know maybe i would find the the paper like a week or two weeks after and i'll be like oh i actually got to do all this you know it really validates you and really and it's also all a way to manifest you know um your reality you know because it's like when we're able to really put put all of it into a paper you know it allows you to actually manifest all of that 40 percent higher than, than just carrying that in your thoughts you know and i love that you mentioned uh you said seven pillars um six well i mean i could I, I kind of indecisive because I can. We're adding taking one out, okay? Yeah. I can like I can put cold showers in there, mm -hmm. but I'm still not 100 percent on the research to where it's like I pref I recommend it to everyone, but like those things I did mention, you I can know, talk like I would recommend. You know, I do that every day without like you know giving a title to it. You know, and on the foundation of like those six seven pillars. It really is just about doing simple things, you know, like, Thanks. you know, like staying hydrated, you know, getting yep. some sunlight, allowing the codes from the sun, you know, that's connected to the Grand Central Sun to, you know, like that, those light codes, those rainbow light codes literally expand you, you know, and like, and then like eating high vibration of food too, you know, like it, it really is about being able to embody who you want to be in the now, right? Mm. And this leads us into the last chapter of our episode, which is, you know, in my experience, I feel like, and not only my experience, you know, just looking around the spiritual community and from all these teachers, you know, Abraham Hicks, you know, on and on and on you know and like for you guys that are watching like we have all this information and knowledge because we do our spiritual research you know and through time we you know things that work for us you know we implement that into our reality you know and i feel like all information is free you know it's everywhere you know and it just takes a person to really do their own research diving into their own experience that works for them. I don't necessarily believe that there's this one specific way that will take people to enlightenment, you know? I feel like we're all 
so unique at different angles and extensions of the universe, you know, that we're all meant to kind of like find our, our own way, you know? Um, yeah. But one of the easiest ways to essentially be able to um, drop ourselves to the 5D, right, is gratitude, you know? And gratitude really is like even just being grateful for like little things in your life, you know, I have this water to drink, I have this on my head, you know, I have this beautiful colors I can see around me, you know, like I'm grateful that today I'm able to walk, you know, I'm able to take myself to the next bedroom or the bathroom, you know, like little things like that, you know, and then that creates a chain in your brain you know, to start finding all the other ones, you know, and that takes you out of lack, consciousness, suffering, liberation. It, it really puts you in this higher, higher state of awareness. Yeah, I have a lot to say about this. <laughs> yes. Um, I, the, along to what you were saying, gratitude, it does take us out of scarcity. And so I, I, I even you know, subscribe to the term gratitude is abundance. Yeah. And, you know, success doesn't, uh, happiness doesn't depend on success. You know, success comes from happiness. And so once we, you know, frequency, vibration precedes manifestation. And so we must, you know, if you're, and you, if you've been into manifestation, you may have heard that being grateful for the reality that you're trying to manifest before you manifest it is the oh, way yes. that you manifest. And so, and, and really at a deeper level, what I've realized is that at the core of it, you know, behind this huge dream life manifestation that I'm trying to create, why, why, why do I want to create it? And it's because of how I want to feel. It's yeah. because not because I, it can be whatever, like all this ego stuff is because I want to be free and I want to be happy. And, and the thing is, is that it's removing that, that illusion of there being a future and realizing that it is now there is only is now. And, and gratitude is the way that we, we realize that we are rich. Like, like literally what, what makes, what's the true meaning of wealth? it's, it's having an abundance of what we value the most and, you know, not money or all these, any material things. It's literally, I, we are breathing right now. Conversation is currency is abundance. It's gratitude because we value it. Yes. And, and is, is presence as well, because when, you know, you really humble yourself and come into the moment when you're like, whoa, actually, like, I don't need to be in my mind thinking about this or that, because oh, yeah. look at right here, right now, like, and, and these, and I think it's important to realize that these aren't just little things, like, like, we have, I, I often say that I could, we could cry for hours of just absolute gratitude over the fact that we have hands. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and like, every single oxygen molecule that we're breathing like each one of those sextillion oxygen molecules are each a miracle and like we're just made up of miracles but we've got so out of our body to the point where we're just like seeking this and that and and we don't realize that our body doesn't know the difference between something we are visualizing and actually experiencing and so we are the dream life you know yeah Gratitude is like, it really is that connection to your heart as well, you know, because our hearts are beating since that they were born unconditionally, you know, your heart didn't like, you didn't wake up, your heart was like, wow. I don't want to, I don't want to be alive today. And it's still beating unconditionally. Gratitude, it is our birthright. It is that light, you know, from source energy that's always emanating from our heart. And oftentimes, like when we're going through rough times or when we don't have discipline or we, when we just don't care, you know, to get out of that uh, pi um, autopilot, you know, um, we get caught up in all these thoughts of the, of the brain, you know, in like, and then they kind of like control us, you know, and takes us to all these places 
you know, and like, I call that the clutter mind, you know, like when every day, you know, we, we're not releasing that energy and it's just like adds up and then it would feel heavier, heavier and heavier. But when we are vibrating from gratitude, we become lighter because we understand that this is just an invitation. Like we volunteer to even be here, you know, to have this experience, you know, and then you start finding gratitude in everything, you know, looking at a tree, you know, uh, seeing life from what really is, you know, like from the heart. And, you know, a lot of people are always asking me, Trevor, like, well, how I can go into the 5D, you know? Um, or sometimes they ask, them, well, you know, everyone is always saying embody that energy that you want to manifest, but how? By feeling good where you are. You know, and Abraham Hicks taught me this. Shout out to him, <laughs> to Esther Hicks. Shout out to her. And shout out to all the people that have really have really shaped us into who we are right now. Because if it wasn't for them, honestly, you know, that's a, that's a whole community. That is a part of, that's the whole community. It's like, we're all adding into the pieces of the puzzle, you know? In, in my experience, you know, when I first got into the vortex, Abraham Hicks, I was like, wow, okay. Like, you literally tell me that when I'm in my vortex, everything that I need is already there, you know? And even like, sometimes you wanna be somewhere where we're not, you know? Then we go into the mind, I don't have that. Then I'm gonna feel miserable here. That actually stops us having that because it creates lack consciousness. So it really is about that vibrational match. But when we really are in this moment, knowing that the only way we're gonna get that is like being happy where we are right now, even if like maybe perhaps a physical manifestation that are not there, we are there receptive through gratitude. They were actually opening, you know, and then just the validate the validations are yet to come, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. And I think that's so important. Um how you kind of just talked about holding space for our emotions and just letting them be as they are. When you look at the vibrational scale of consciousness um, of, you know, the emotional scale, um, you're going to have, you have to go through acceptance to get to gratitude and back oh, into yeah. love. So, um, you know, a lot of people, they, they want to, you know, embody it before it manifests, but they haven't accepted their current reality and and they haven't really they haven't accepted their perception of their current reality like they haven't found acceptance for how they feel they're they're trying to push away those emotions but yeah in through the great like violet flame of trend we you know we find this burning like love for everything like all the pain and the suffering um too yes yeah. yeah. So acceptance is the is the gateway to those those higher emotions. Yeah, and surrendering too, you know. Yeah. Even when we don't have what we what is yet to come, you know, just being able to surrender here, you know, that's what Lakshmi, you know, taught me. You know, you gotta be in the moment and feel that abundance. Even if mm -hmm. it's just like if one little thing makes you feel like you're abundant, then you focus on that, you know, and even nature, you know, just being around nature and all of that is their abundance. You know, even being able to meditate and then perhaps play a guided meditation, that is abundance. So really it's about, you know, just like for the little things and then little by little, you create those pathways in your brain and then you're doing, you're doing that unconsciously, you know? Yeah. And then perhaps when your brain is like trying to take you to like, well, I don't have that or, or to lack consciousness and you see that instead of actually being that animation without knowing what's going on, right? Exactly. And, you know, people in poor countries um, are tend to be way happier than people in rich countries um, based on a few
And so it's not about what we have, you know, it's not, yes. um, we can use what we have as a, as a doorway um, to lead us deeper into gratitude. Um, but ultimately, like you, you can over, like literally everything, like you can sit in gratitude, for, you could cry of gratitude for anything because that's how miraculous existence is. And so, you know, I, I found myself first thing in gratitude practice, I used to get caught up in like trying to like name all the things I have and like everything, but you know, the core of joy, the core of gratitude, and the core of bliss is just. Oh, yes, it's, yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely want to advise anyone like, in the morning is the best way to practice gratitude, you know, and, you know, that will put you in that alignment, you know, that will be that foundation for your day, you know, because it's like the mind is waking up yet again to the world of form, you know, so you do want to give the mind something to do or something to think about. That's when we really befriend, you know, we become friends with the mind and the ego. You know, because the mind is always like, I need a job or I'm going to try to resolve or create a problem. Where problems, there's no problems, you know. So it's yep. like warning, gratitude, um, affirmations, definitely it. Well, we are getting into the ending of our episode. And, you know, life really is about being in the moment, you know, knowing when to transmute, knowing when to be present with your body's emotions, you know, and perhaps if you have a rough day, you know, and you trip, knowing that you are capable of picking yourself up again, rise up back into that high vibration, you know, and it really, really goes all that down into that, you know. So we're going to close this episode with a really short um, guided affirmation meditation. Yeah, so what we're going to do is close our eyes and put our hands on our heart center. And when we put our hands on our heart, we increase the electromagnetic frequency around our heart and around our bodies just by putting our awareness there. So just a second to breathe into your heart setting your intention to feel more love and more gratitude here and now. We are absolutely capable. And into your heart right now, bring someone or something that you are intensely grateful for. You know, it may just be something that's happened recently or someone in your life right now that is really grateful they exist and feel them and see them fully and bring them into your heart and allow yourself to feel all the emotions from this person and amplify that feeling. Amplify it even more. Imagine this green energy growing brighter and brighter and you're stoking this energy with your breath. And imagine this vision of this memory or this person get more and more clear, more vivid. We're creating brain heart coherence and feel these words resonate throughout your heart and your whole body. I am the love that I seek. I am the love that I seek. I am everything I seek. I can be, do, or have anything. I am everything. I am connected to everything. I am supported. I am empowered by everything. The whole universe is conspiring to help us thrive. 
There are legions of angels, ancestors, guides, ascended masters rooting for us here and now. We are so loved, so supported through this earth journey, and we are free to feel love and gratitude and be kids again. And to end this meditation, I invite you to plant a seed in your heart. So you can put, put your hands out in front of you and imagine there's this seed in your hands and this infuse this seed with the intention to feel more gratitude. You know, when things seem to be dark, when, you know, things seem to be boring to just bring gratitude, endless gratitude and, you know, infuse this seed with the knowing that there are infinite things to be grateful for in every moment. And there's infinite amount of love. And then go ahead and just open up your heart and put it in, plant that seed with trust that we can be free as children. It is done and so it is. Aho. Thank you all so much for being here. Yes, guys, thank you so much for this beautiful short meditation. And, you know, say hi, open the heart. That really, that heart center, the heart center portal, it really, really is that connection to the 5D. And thank you mm. so much for being here, brother, and for just bringing everything you know, to this episode. And um, where can people find you? So y'all can find me on Instagram at Bliss Ninja. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy to remember. I also make high vibrational music at Trev Mental and um, have a YouTube channel called just my name, Trevor Nielsen. Um, and um, I would love to go deeper, connect with you guys and build more. And then can you tell my people where to find you my brother yes you guys can find me on instagram as virtual feline same as tiktok you can find me on youtube as pythagoras blue arc and my main of uh, socials is instagram and youtube and uh, yeah you know i'm always open to connecting with like you know people that are mirrors to myself so yeah thank you so much Thank you.